The forest is a vital link in the chain of life on Earth. After centuries of over-exploitation for timber and fertile land, humans are slowly realizing that natural forests mean so much more than that. In Europe, North America, in East and South Asia, forests are now protected, often sustainably managed and expanding. The deforestation rate is also slowing in Latin America and Southeast Asia. But in Africa, forests are increasingly under threat. Over the last decade, the continent has been the most dynamic region of the world in terms of economic growth. But this model of growth, based on extracting natural resources, has taken a high toll on the African forest. Is Africa on the brink of sacrificing its invaluable forests and a critical condition for its sustainable and inclusive growth on the altar of quick and short-term profit? We often hear that people and countries need to deforest to develop. This is clearly becoming more and more absurd. But for many rural populations, such as those in Madagascar, the choices seem stark. La culture brûlée, c'est l'agriculture des pauvres dans les forêts. Parce que dans les forêts de Madagascar actuelles, où ce sont tous des coins isolés, les populations n'arrivent plus à, à subvenir à leurs besoins pour le, le travail qu'ils ont besoin vraiment de défricher la, la forêt naturelle. Et ils coupent la forêt, ils brûlent et ils plantent euh, du riz et du, du maïs sur les pentes. In Tanzania too, the need for basic survival drives many to clear forests. On a chukua hizi kuni moja moja hizi, unenda kuzungushia ule mti. Alafu baadaye unachoma moto. Kisha choma moto ule mti unaungua huko chini. Kisha ungua unakauka. Kisha kauka tena basi. Ni kwamba kwa sisi huku tulivyo ni kweli miti inaisha. Lakini kwa sisi huku mtazamo wetu mpaka kusha miti tunaona kutakuwa mbali sana. In Ethiopia, basic subsistence is less of a driver. Here, the coffee industry brings a living to nearly 40% of the population. But the cost has been massive deforestation. The land degradation and deforestation has been widespread in the north and central uh, Ethiopia. And we have lost almost all our forest resources in that part of uh, the country. The world population of co populations of coffee are found all in this land in Ethiopia. So this is a big uh, global resource, really. In Democratic Republic of Congo, where the largest virgin forest in Africa sits on top of hugely valuable mineral deposits, large-scale industry is putting heavy pressure on the country's green assets. The grand factor of deforestation in RDC is the investment mal orienté. Ici, je vois les investissements miniers, les investissements forestiers. Au jour d'aujourd'hui, il y a aussi les investissements pétroliers qui sont prononcés. C'est-à-dire qu'au fur et à mesure qu'on est en train de déforester ces, ces, ces forêts, ça va jouer sur non seulement le poumon mondial, mais ça va aussi jouer sur la nourriture, le médicament, le bien, le subsistance pour ces populations qui ne dépendent et ne vivent que de forêts. And in Côte d'Ivoire, which made a fortune from its main cash crops of coffee and cocoa, the few remaining pockets of primary forest are still being encroached on by illegal farmers. La terre est fatiguée parce qu'il pleut pas assez. C'est le manque de pluie qui fait que la terre est fatiguée. Aujourd'hui, il y a une longue saison sèche par rapport à la saison de pluie. Oui. Voilà. It appears that there are two major fundamental reasons behind deforestation in Africa. 
The first is related to poverty and demographic dynamics. People eking out their living from forests and missing the capacities to take advantage of them sustainably. The second reason relates to large industrial projects, converting hundreds of thousands of hectares of forest every year to large-scale mining or agricultural plantations. But most of these projects happen in the context of very weak governance and mainly serve the interests of a few while failing to redistribute the financial gains to really sustain development. These big projects boost national GDPs, but most of the time local people pay the ecological and social price for it. They are sacrificed along with the forests for the profits of a few. None of these two reasons in Africa are fundamentally contributing to development, sometimes quite the opposite. Hopefully, there are many other ways. Forests are indeed invaluable. 1.6 billion people are said to depend directly on forests. That's one in four people in the world. This ratio is even higher in Africa, where the population is still mainly rural. But virtually everyone depends on forests, directly or indirectly. Of course, forests provide food like bushmeat, caterpillars, honey, wild crops, but also medicine, timber for construction and as a source of energy and water. Fundamental elements for people's livelihood and national economies. On doit, on doit regarder le rôle de la forêt comme un stabilisateur, comme un régulateur du climat. On prend un exemple très simple. Si nous n'avons plus d'abeilles, qui va polliniser euh, les fleurs Qui va polliniser les champs de cacao Qui va polliniser nos différentes espèces végétales Donc vous avez des services invisibles qui sont rendus par la nature, qui sont indispensables à la performance économique euh, de, de, de nos pays, de nos planteurs, etc. Euh, et si jamais on perd cet, cet écosystème, si on perd cette biodiversité, ben, progressivement on va perdre une, ser une certaine série de productions agricoles, de productions euh, pharmaceutiques, etc. Most services provided by forests are not accounted for in GDP. That's the case of regulating, but also cultural services. Forests not only contribute to mitigate climate change, but they also strengthen the resilience of social systems by preventing soil erosion, regulating water cycles, and enabling favourable conditions for agriculture, food security and rural development. Why is it not everywhere in Côte d'Ivoire now? Les saisons diffèrent d'une région à l'autre. La déforestation qui cause tous ces problèmes. La déforestation. Et nous sommes obligés de détruire les forêts pour gagner des grandes superficies. We need to look at forests beyond the wood they provide. Forest is the goose that lays the golden eggs. They're fundamental not only to forest dwellers, but to food security, to access to energy, access to water, to multiple production and service sectors. Those are the pillars of economic development, social inclusion. If you kill the goose, say goodbye to the golden eggs that are nothing less than the conditions to political stability of African nations. If there is no forest, we don't have any rain, and so no agriculture. And bienvenue the poverty, the sécheresses, and the les, les conflicts les conflits will intensify. For the last few decades, African countries have implemented various projects to try to curb deforestation but with limited means and only local impacts compared to the competing forces at play. Ironically, it is from the climate change debate that a light of hope has come for African forests. Between 2007 and 2013, the international community has negotiated under the UN Climate Convention to set up the Red Plus mechanism and incentivize countries reducing deforestation and enhancing forest carbon stocks. In the meantime, Bilateral and multilateral initiatives have been launched to support developing countries to get ready for Red Plus. That is to say, to design strategies to address the drivers of deforestation and set up the technical elements to set the baseline and demonstrate results in compliance with the UN FCCC guidelines, so to eventually access result-based payments. 
The United Nations has taken its share of the load, bringing together its agriculture, development and environmental programs to work together and support countries as one. In Africa, the UN RED program has 28 partner countries that it supports through national programs, targeted supports, providing technical backstopping and fostering South-South exchanges. When RED Plus emerged, some civil society organisations were sceptical. If you increase the value of forests, you also increase the value of forested land and so the risks of having vulnerable communities expelled from their land. But Red Plus comes with strong social and environmental safeguards that countries are invited to design in a very participative and transparent way. In many countries, Red Plus has allowed government and civil society organisations to talk and listen to each other for the first time. This creates a context of dialogue and respect that allows people to explore new solutions to protect forests. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, a law is currently being drafted and discussed in Parliament, which uh, focuses on the recognition and protection of indigenous peoples and their rights, which have been made possible through this context of dialogue on indigenous peoples and their rights in the RED process. Red Plus has also brought additional means to improve the capacities of countries to monitor their forests. Eventually, Red is a result-based mechanism. Uh, that means that we have to design a reference level and uh, monitor the results uh, against this line. All this requires a lot of uh, strong and robust uh, data that are often missing. Thanks to Red, uh, countries like uh, Uganda, uh, Zambia, Tanzania, Ethiopia and uh, Congo are carrying out uh, national forest inventories. Data are also critical to raise national leaders' awareness and understanding on the real value of forests and the need to take action. National budgets for forests are very small, mainly because the multiple benefits are not properly captured in statistical systems, even if they can be huge. In Ethiopia, a study by the UN RED program has demonstrated that just from wild coffee and honey collected from forests, a contribution of 2.5% of GDP was generated. And if you imagine the many other ecosystem services from forests, such as water, uh, pollination, timber, non-wood forest products, the value of forests is probably much higher, and we're currently estimating these values for Ethiopia. To effectively reduce emissions, governments need to tackle the drivers of deforestation and to lift the barriers to forest protection and expansion. Ici, c'est la ruée vers le site de production du cacao. Il fallait euh, aller vite, il fallait occuper l'espace vite, et la preuve que tu as occupé l'espace, c'est en coupant la forêt. But drivers and barriers are multifaceted and often deeply rooted into underlying factors like weak governance lack of clarity in tenure rights, or perverse fiscal incentives. Red Plus has the potential to bring a real paradigm shift, as countries are gradually expected to achieve results at the national level. Le vrai problème, euh, le vrai problème de la déforestation, le vrai problème du changement climatique, c'est pas le manque de solutions, c'est la capacité à informer rapidement toutes les personnes des solutions que nous avons et à leur donner les outils pour aller à l'encontre de pratiques qui nuisent à notre développement. On the other hand, deforestation in Africa is often the result of the lack of choice from vulnerable populations. It's not only a matter of awareness; they need to be supported to change practices. Quand nous allons vers les populations, ils disent oui, c'est vrai, nous devons protéger, préserver les forêts. Mais qu'est-ce qu'on fait Qu'est-ce qu'on mange en attendant C'est ça, c'est ça le dilemme. Indeed, Red Plus doesn't imply to compete with the national priorities to alleviate poverty and foster development. Actually, forest protection and development can be mutually supportive. Ça c'est la troisième année que je suis ici. C'est un bon projet, c'est un bon projet parce que ces projets 
a été conçu pour avoir de l'huile, pour avoir de l'argent. Nous vivons en harmonie avec les, les populations et toutes les techniques agroforestières que nous faisons ici, c'est ce que nous les apprenons. On est en communion avec eux. Harmonizing different views and finding integrated solutions is very challenging in Côte d'Ivoire, but the President of the Republic himself has stepped forward and pledged that by 2017 the supply chains for cocoa would be deforestation free. And that strong high-level commitment was very important for us to get everybody around the table and make sure all the various stakeholders are together to find a solution that is sustainable. Ethiopia's you know, green, climate resilient green growth strategy offers an opportunity to anchor forestry and by extension red plus into that process. Which means that if Ethiopia is addressing agriculture, they're going to also going to reflect on forestry issues. If they're addressing mining issues, they concurrently also reflect on forestry issues. One of the biggest challenges for red plus and for sustainable forest management is that we need to bring the various sectors together that have to have an influence on the way forests are managed. For example, agriculture, which is the biggest driver of deforestation, but also the forest industry, tourism, the water sector, the energy sector. And this cross-sectoral integration is very difficult in practice. So we are supporting a number of our partner countries to achieve this integration of different views to make sure we find integrated solutions. In most African countries, states have limited capacities to improve the macro conditions for Red Plus implementation. In the discussion of the mise en place of the strategy Red, we talk about 5 dollars per ton for the CO2. The calculs that we have done have demonstrated that if we want to achieve a minimum rentability, we need to be at least 15 and 20 dollars. So there is still a great work to do. However, according to my point of view, Euh, ces fameux crédits RED, ces fameux crédits carbone euh, vont faire appel à cette solidarité internationale. One of the newest initiatives which, which has been set up is the Central Africa Forest Initiative, CAFI for short. And, and CAFI is innovative in many reasons, for many reasons because it's really looking at how do you really finance you know, national strategies, how do you finance comprehensive investment frameworks. And I think by looking at a regional initiative of this kind and bringing countries together to look at how they can work together in, in a comprehensive manner to address issues of forestry and Red Plus for that matter, it's something that we, we, can, we can applaud. Red Plus is bringing new hope for the forests of Africa. Will that be enough to change the course of deforestation across the continent? I mean, the Red Plus is a brilliant idea. It's a positive for the planet, for the international community, for the ecosystems. And my hope is that government is committed, people are aware of the use of these forest resources, and eventually we'll have that wealthy and healthy uh, country at the end. As the international community has now engaged to pursue the sustainable development goals, forests are unveiling the multiple and invaluable benefits they can provide to African populations. Red Plus can prove to be a game changer in making forests and development walk hand in hand. By 2020, we can hope that a few leading countries will turn these lessons into action and demonstrate concrete results to make this vision become obvious to everyone. The coming five years are really exciting. The world is now looking at African leaders in governments, civil society movements and large corporations and also at the international community and is urging them to make this change happen. <laughs>